Well, the Trump economy continues to fire on all cylinders. Get this, U.S. workers now seeing their highest pay increase since 2008. That's the employment cost index came out today, 2.8% uh, for the second quarter. This, as U.S. consumer confidence continues to roll, spending and income big time solid in June. Households spend more money on restaurants, accommodation, uh, really building that strong base, building on what's already been an amazing economy. And I think we've got some strong head, uh, so tailwinds going into the rest of the year. With me now to discuss Peter Schiff, Euro-Pacific Capital CEO, and Melissa Armo, the stock swoosh uh, CEO. Uh, Peter, I got to start with you. You and I went back and forth a few days ago, uh, uh, and you discussed the, the notion that, no, we all got it wrong, and that a recession is right around the corner. Yeah, I don't think we have a booming economy at all. There isn't a historic turnaround. We're not firing on all cylinders. This is the same bubble economy that President Trump accurately criticized when he was a candidate. The only thing Trump's been able to do since he became president is blow a little air back into that bubble. But it's all going to the air is going to come out. This thing is going to deflate. And I think all this cheerleading and all this uh, self congratulations about victories that haven't been won, I think it's going to come back to bite the president and the Republican Party in 2020. Melissa? Well, I, the victory has been one. The tax cuts are working. That's why consumer spending <laughs> is up and people are at their jobs and corporations are hiring and now they're able to pay more. Why? Because corporations are saving with the tax cuts. So this is just the beginning. We've barely begun. I, I totally disagree with him. I'm sorry. I think that we're in a position now where we're going to see a great end of 2018 going into 2019 if we continue to see these numbers. Look at the GDP number that came out on Friday. I mean, I just can't see any reason to be negative. Well, at all. Peter? Well, first of all, you know, we had plenty of one-off quarters under Obama. He had four quarters that were higher than 4.1. And by the way, we're probably going to revise that down so it's not really going to hold. But sure, if you give tax cuts, you can get a temporary boost. And so people are spending a little bit now because the government ran up the deficit. And one of the reasons people are spending more is because prices are going up. So in many cases, it's just people paying more for the things they're buying, not buying more stuff. Peter, what, what is the main... Under, under What's the main the yeah. main thing that you're concerned about though? What's the what's the biggest fault line in this economy? Well, well first of all, when when Trump inherited the economy, there were a lot of structural problems that still exist and that haven't been addressed. One of the big ones was the size of government. Government was much too big. It was spending much too much. And unfortunately, under President Trump, we have increased both welfare spending and warfare spending. We have made this big government even bigger, yet we've reduced the revenues to pay for it. You know, in your last segment, you were talking about cutting capital gains taxes. Look, I like to eliminate capital gains taxes. I like to eliminate the income tax. But to do that, we have to eliminate all the government sure, that that sure. money is being spent on. But Trump is not doing that. He's telling up Republicans they can have a free lunch. No, well, they well, can't. I, we I have get what to you're pay saying. for government. I get what you're I saying. I mean, that, that spending lunch. bill was, uh, yeah. was something that even, I think even President Trump regretted. Uh, but having said that, we are seeing a, a dramatic decline in things like food stamp recipients and, 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 and the economy. All the other metrics are looking great. And then, you know, maybe anecdotally, but after the bell, Apple's numbers are out. Uh, the consumer is out there spending money. I guess the question is, is it yeah. sustainable? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, that's what well, we're going to say. This Obama, Obama, Obama's gone. He's out, okay? So Trump is in, and he's doing what he can, and he just barely begun, and I think you got to give him a chance. I mean, as far as what you want to look for in the metrics, where things are increasing up, you don't want to see doot, doot, doot. You want to see it going up. So whether it's a small decline or a big decline, as long as we're going higher. We're trending every, higher. Exactly. And all the key metrics. Yeah. All the Look, things. GDP, market, all the stuff we want to see. No. We, that's <laughs> what you want to see. You want to see the rise. It, the, that's that's what it looks like before a collapse. You know, the problem was consumers were spending too much. I mean, we don't want consumers borrowing and spending more money. We need people saving money. We need capital investment. Yeah, well, you know, that's why we saving. have trade people deficits. People are saving because it's, interest rates are no, up. No, they're not. They're, they're not saving. Interest rates we're are higher and, and more people they're, are saving. Money market yeah, rates are up. Saving yeah, rates are up. They're, interest rates are up and they're, savings They're accounts. still too low, but people are not saving. They are spending. I and they're spending it on borrowed money on imports. They're spending you know, and President saving. Trump By the way, I, I'm, I'm getting the rap signal, though, Peter. I do want to ask you. You yeah. actually, though, believe a, re, a good old-fashioned recession could be cathartic and also address the, the trade imbalance issue at the same time. 
Well, a recession is coming. I think had Hillary Clinton won, we would already be in recession. So we were able to postpone it for a couple of years. But unfortunately, I think it's going to be worse than the Great Recession of 2008, 2009. So we're going to have to rename that. And a, a recession would be cathartic if the government would let it run its course. Unfortunately, the Federal Reserve keeps coming in right. with artificial stimulants. They print money. They do quantitative easing. They, they, they reduce interest rates. And they actually make the problems worse. The, the problem for Trump and for the country is that when it hits the fan, it's going to be blamed on his rhetoric. It's going to be blamed on the tax cuts. It's going to be blamed sure. on the free market. Sure. That's not how, how we got into the mess. And I think we're going to lay the foundation well, for a sharp turn this is, of the left this is a big, in 2020. Big, this is a big experiment. Uh, we're going to see. We've got a chance to see if Reaganomics 2.0 works. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and listen, we're in the midst of it right now. The growth part is coming. We'll see if the, if the revenues to the Treasury. This is Ultimately, Charles. ultimately I know, I know ultimately we've got to cut government spending. I think everyone in the White House knows that as well. Thank you both very much. Meanwhile, sports, well, let's face it, used to be the pastime that just brought us all together, right? We'd go, we hug, we cheered. We would hug strangers as long as our team was winning. Now it's all about politics and things like racial division. We'll discuss that next.